Here I'll, do, I'll discuss a nice application of the monotonic convergence theorem for sequences. Yeah, consider the following sequence. Yeah, consider a sequence for which we don't, do not have a precise formula, but we define the elements iteratively by the following procedure. Suppose we start off with the first element a1 equals 3. And now the definition of the sequence is complete by showing how we can find a consecutive element. So an plus 1 is defined as the square root of 1 plus an. So why does it provide a valid definition? Well, we just might calculate some values and you see how it works. So first we have the index n and the corresponding element an. So first in, in 1 we have 3 and the value in 2 is the square root of 1 plus a1 is the square root of 4, which equals 2. And in this way we proceed. So pick up a value a n and we construct a n plus 1 by adding 1 to a n and then taking the square root in this fashion. Well, the question here is, does this sequence converge? And if so, can we find its limit? Yeah, so we don't have a precise formula, so algebraic not manipulations of the sequence and using the limit rules and limit properties won't help us here. Well, first of all, we might notice that actually this an, the sequence an, is a decreasing, monotonically decreasing sequence. Yeah, so by going from n is 1 to 2, we see the values 3, 2, square root of 3. This is, is, is the beginning of a decreasing sequence, but we can also show that this holds in general. And we use a proof by induction to show this. So let pk be the statement that ak plus 1 is smaller or equal than ak. Yeah, for k in n. In order to show pk for arbitrary k, we first have to show the first inequality, p1. Well, p1 is obviously true since we have that a2, for k is 1, equals 2 and a1 equals 3. So that a2 is indeed smaller than a1. Yeah, so this is good. Now, suppose we have shown that pk is true for some value of k. Yeah, so, suppose we know that ak plus 1 is smaller or equal than ak for some specific value of k. Then we need to show that pk plus 1 is, uh, is true. How can we show this? Well, ak plus 1, if we add 1, it's still smaller or equal than ak plus 1. Yeah, so here we immediately use the induction hypothesis. And then by taking the square root on both sides, we see that the square root of ak plus 1 is smaller or equal than ak plus 1. So that ak plus 2 is smaller or equal than ak plus 1. Yeah, so pk plus 1 is true. Well, these two steps combined form the heart of a proof by induction, so pk is true for all k in n. So on the other end, we know that, now we've, now we've shown that a n is monotonically decreasing, but we also see immediately, this is easier to show, that a n is bounded. Yeah? is bounded from below, since obviously once we have a positive element a n, then a n plus 1 will be positive. You can show this using the technique of induction, proof by induction again. 
But since an is a monotonically decreasing sequence, then its first element is the highest in the sequence, and the first element has value 3. So we know that an is bounded between 0 and 3. So the monotonic convergence theorem states that the limit for n to infinity of an exists. Yeah, so the, the sequence has a limit. So when the limit of this sequence exists, we try to calculate it. Yeah, so suppose, well, we know that it exists. So suppose that we write L for the limit of the sequence. So suppose that the limit of n to infinity of a n equals L. Yeah, so this indicates the long-term behavior of the sequence. So if we would just make a new sequence, b n equals a n plus 1, yeah, then this is the sequence with the same, of course, the same long-term behavior. So the limit of n to infinity a n plus 1 equals the limit of n to infinity of a n. Well, try to prove it. It's not that hard. But you have to know what to show. So we now take this as a given. Then if this is given, then we may conclude that yeah, it follows that we start off with L on the left hand side. L equals the limit of n to infinity a n. Yeah, but this equals the limit of n to infinity of a n plus one. Now we use the formula for a n plus 1. This is the limit of n to infinity of the square root of 1 plus a n. And this equals the square root of 1 plus the limit of a n. Yeah? So here we use the fact that actually the square root is a continuous function and we use the direct substitution property to get the limit under the square root sign. But we know the limit of n to infinity a n since this equals L. Yeah, so final step uh, pretty last equality was due to the direct substitution property for limits. But now we might solve for L since we now know that L equals the square root of 1 plus L. Yeah, so squaring le left and right, we see that L squared equals 1 plus L. Yeah. But also we know that L should be larger than 0, right? We can only do this if L is larger than 0. So we solve for the quadratic equation, L squared minus L minus 1 equals 0, and L should be at least 0. Yeah, so we deduce that actually L equals 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So it's kind of fascinating that, that we here we were able to calculate the limit of a sequence without an explicit formula to calculate its terms.